I think the reason the H20 news was a surprise over the past couple of days is because the trend of U.S. policy had certainly been to trying to restrict access uh, to China's AI ecosystem and to limit the ability of Chinese firms like DeepSeek or like ByteDance to buy the most advanced chips. And so that's why this reversal from the Trump administration that did take most people uh, by surprise. I think you're also right to say that the key question in the long run is not what is the U.S. willing to sell to China, but what's China capable of producing domestically on its own. I think there's not much doubt that if Huawei, which is the leading producer of AI chips in China, could produce enough chips at a high enough level of quality, Chinese firms would buy largely, if not exclusively, from Huawei. The problem right now is that they can't produce at the scale that's uh, needed. They're producing uh, medium volumes of AI chips, but China's uh, largest firms want to buy large volumes. So that's why they've turned to NVIDIA. Right now, uh, it doesn't seem like China's leading chip makers, SMIC, which produces GPU chips for Huawei, are going to be able to ramp up their production capacity fast enough to meet China's own internal demand. Not this year, probably not next year. Even by 2027, it's pretty unclear. And so long as that's the case, as long as China can't be self-sufficient, it's going to need to rely on importing AI chips. And right now, that means importing AI chips that are manufactured in Taiwan and designed by U.S. firms like NVIDIA or AMD. Do you see the chance of a upside surprise coming out of China? I mean, you know, maybe the deep seek moment for semiconductors in China. I say that just because a lot of the memory uh, industry watchers have said, oh, you know, China has years, if not like a decade to catch up with uh, some of the players in South Korea and so on. And here we are, we're talking about Samsung's and SK Hynix is saying that they are suffering or they're struggling because of the legacy memory chip competition coming out of China already in 2024. So. Uh, maybe we're going to get there uh, with China, with some of the AI chips as well, Huawei in the run. Well, I think we already see when it comes to legacy chips, both memory and processors, Chinese yeah. firms having a big impact on the market, winning market share both in China, but also globally, and also putting pressure on prices. That's exactly what companies like Samsung and Hynix are uh, referencing in the memory sector. That's that's already happening, and it's going to keep happening, uh, and the impact will be larger, I think, over the next uh, couple of years. In terms of a surprise, uh, in terms of China jumping ahead in capabilities, you know, it's always possible to be surprised, uh, but I think when you listen to the Chinese ecosystem, when you listen to the Taiwanese ecosystem, which has great visibility into capabilities in China, uh, what you find is that when it comes to vast chip manufacturing, there's still a lot of reliance on the international supply chain, which means Dutch and Japanese and U.S. and Taiwanese capabilities. And it's hard to leap ahead in a supply chain that's just so complicated. If it had been easy, China probably would have already done that leap ahead. And so that's why I think you've got China focused on this question of can it keep getting access to these advanced ships that are made in Taiwan because they're so critical to China's technology ecosystem. You know, another way to look at the question is China's been targeting rhetorically as well as in terms of its spending self-sufficiency in semiconductors for a decade, but its imports of chips have been trending upwards uh, because it's been unable to produce enough chips at the cutting edge for phones, for PCs, or for AI. So there's already been a real drive towards self-sufficiency, but it's not an easy thing to accomplish. Much easier said than actually done.